The next part of stoichiometry builds a little bit, and these are what are known as limiting reactants. It's kind of like a recipe. You know, you have three eggs and two cups of flour and one cup of sugar, uh, and, you know, etc. to make your cake. But if you only have half a cup of flour left, then you can't make the whole cake. The same thing occurs with the chemical reaction. If you run out of one of the ingredients, one of the reactants, then you can't make as much of the product. So the substance you run out of is the limiting reactant. The substance you have extra of is the excess reactant. And essentially, there, this is a pretty tough set of problems. You just have to look ahead a little bit and try to save yourself some work later. Most of the time, these problems have parts. So it might, you know, part A might be figure out what the limiting reactant is, but part B might be figure out how much of this one particular product you're looking for. So when you solve it, solve for that one particular product. Okay, exercise three. We're going to start setting up here. Take a moment to read it. All right. One of the clues that we have a limiting reactant problem is that I have two given values. I have 4.22 grams of silver nitrate, and I also have 7.73 grams of aluminum chloride. That means I have two reactants. I have to figure out which one. My unknown or unknowns, what mass of silver chloride can be made? So I want grams of silver chloride. Ag is a plus one, Cl is a minus one, so that's my equation. And I also want to know how much excess reactant remains. This one's a little tough because you might not have had to make an equation like this before or even in a while. So you need to set this up um, looking at what we have. It says, what mass of silver chloride can be made? So I know that that's going to be a product. Ag and Cl. Ag is plus 1, Cl is minus 1. From the reaction of silver nitrate, so that's Ag NO3, and da da da, aluminum chloride. Al is a plus 3. Cl is a minus 1, so I need to cross those charges to get the uh, charges to balance. AlCl3 is the value. And then the last thing it doesn't tell us, so we have to figure it out. This is a double replacement reaction. The silver and the aluminum switched. So the silver is now paired with the chlorine. That means the aluminum is now paired with the nitrate. Aluminum is plus 3. Nitrate is minus 1, so I need three whole sets of the nitrate. Now I need to balance it. The first thing I see right off the bat is that I have three nitrates here. If I've got three over here, I have to have three on this side. So three for my coefficient. Now I have three silvers to go along with my three nitrates, so I need that on the other side as well which then gives me three chlorines and three chlorines, and it looks like I'm good to go. So for part A, what I need to do here is I have to do a, a stoichiometry problem with both the silver nitrate and then separately the aluminum chloride. So I'm going to start with my given. I have to get to moles, always get out of grams and get into moles. And I've previously calculated that the molar mass of silver nitrate is 169.88 grams per mole. Notice I am including both the grams and moles type unit as well as the chemical here. It's important when you're switching chemicals so you don't get lost. Next up is my mole ratio. 
I have to get that from my balanced equation. I have silver nitrate at the moment, so I better have silver nitrate on the bottom. And then I go to my equation and I see, oh, there's my coefficient of three. So that means I must have three moles of silver nitrate. The unknown asks me for AGCL. So it would be beneficial to me to go ahead and solve for that substance. So I'm going to go to AGCL and I see that I have three moles of AGCL. And then finally, I need the mass because that's what it asks me for. So I need the molar mass of AGCL and that is 143.32 that I previously calculated. And I multiply all of that and divide it as necessary. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, divide the two, and I get 3.56 grams of AGCL. So again, what that means is that if I started off with 4.22 grams of silver nitrate, and I assume that I have plenty of my other reactant, that I can make 3.56 grams of AGCL but I have another reactant, so I have to test it as well. So now I have to do the same thing over again, except with the aluminum chloride. 7.73 grams of aluminum chloride. Start by getting to moles. The molar mass is 133.35 grams. in one mole of aluminum chloride. It would make sense for my mole ratio now. It would make sense to solve for the same product I did before, so they're comparable. Now I need a ratio between moles of AlCl3 and moles of AgCl, because that's the product I'm after. Back to my equation. Here's AlCo3. There's no coefficient. So that represents one. There's a three in front of this, so that represents uh, three moles of that, of AGCL. And then finally, last but not least, so I can compare in grams, one mole of AGCL to 143.32 grams of AGCL. Multiply across the top, 7.73 times 1 times 3 times 143.32. Hit equals, write it down. Divided by 133.35 times 1 times 1, hit equals, write it down. And you end up with 24.9 grams of AGCL. So to reiterate, this represents, if I start with 7.73 grams of aluminum chloride and I have plenty of silver nitrate, I can make 24.9 grams of AGCL. To figure out how much I really can make, I have to choose the one that is of the lesser value. So my options are here or here. Obviously 3.56 is significantly less than the other one, which tells me that my silver nitrate is my limiting reactant. And that from that, I can make 3.56 grams of silver chloride. That was all part A, yes. Part B, how much excess reactant remains? To do this, I have to first figure out how much of the excess reactant is used up. Alrighty. So to do that, I repeat what I've done with the previous two, except now instead of doing a mole ratio with the silver chloride, I do it between the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. In limiting reactant problems, you're 
always going to start with the limiting reactant. So that was 4.22, oops, not times 10 to the, sorry, grams of AgNO3. Use that beautiful molar mass, 169.88 grams per one mole. I see new markers in my future. Now, like I said, ratio between the limiting and the excess. The limiting from the balanced equation was 3 moles of silver nitrate. The excess was the aluminum chloride, 1 mole of aluminum chloride. And then finally, to get it into grams that we can use. One mole of aluminum chloride is 133.35 grams. At least we already had it from before. And from that I learn as I multiply top, bottom, and then divide the two is that I have used up 1.10 grams of aluminum chloride. To find the excess that remains, I then can take the amount I started with, minus the amount that I used, and that's how much I have left. Okay, the amount I started with was given in the problem. 7.73 grams minus the 1.10 grams leaves me with 6.63 grams of aluminum chloride. All right, good job. The last section of the stoichiometry notes is dealing with percent yield. The theoretical yield would be if a reaction went entirely to completion, meaning all of it reacted, which never happens. Um, if a reaction were perfect, which also pretty much never happens. Um, and it is what we calculate. It's the value that we would calculate. You also need to understand the idea of the actual yield. The actual yield would either be a value given to you in the problem or it would be, for instance, the mass that you got of your substance at the end of your reaction. It's the value that you got in lab. Most important is the equation itself. Kind of small, sorry, I forgot to blow that one up. Percent yield equals the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. So that actual is what it gives you in the problem or you got in the lab. Theoretical is what you calculated using stoichiometry. Smaller number divided by larger number times 100. If you have an actual yield that's bigger than your theoretical yield, there are definitely issues. Okay. So what I'm going to do for exercise 4, give you a second to read it, and then I'm really just going to kind of give you the answers. Okay. You start off, you have an amount of benzene and you have an amount of bromine. Both of those are given. And it tells you how much bromobenzene is produced. So that's the actual yield. Since you're given both reactants, the first thing you do is set up a limiting reactant problem. And I'll give you this information. The benzene ends up being able to create 138.08 grams of bromobenzene. So when you do the stoichiometry, that should be the value that you get. 
the bromine ends up being able to create 254.47 grams of bromobenzene. So you have to decide which is the limiting reactant, and then whichever one of these you think becomes the limiting reactant becomes your theoretical yield. Then you'll set up your actual yield with your theoretical yield, and you will get a percent yield that is equal to 35.9%. So try that out. If you need help, come see me.